Interacting with our smart homes can be done in a lot of different ways. We've got web interface, phone apps, remote controls, and even voice control. But sometimes you just want to touch a button. Well, one of the smartest guys I know created a customizable touch display that you can put in a switch box that will let you control your home assistant devices through MQTT. And best of all, he made it possible for mere mortals like me to build our own. Let's build the Home Assistant Switch Plate. Now, what is the HA switch plate? So the HA switch plate is a 2.4 inch next in touch panel, a D1 mini power supply, and then a PCB that uh, Luma designed to make it easy to put all these things together. On this D1 mini is a sketch that becomes a bridge between MQTT and this funky language. What we can do here with this switch plate is uh, once we get it set up, we can have buttons on it. Or he's even got it with examples for alarm panels and weather and a bunch of things. But essentially, the basics of it is you can have buttons on this switch plate that you can push that will control things in Home Assistant. Fantastic, right? This here costs between $15 to $17 for this. For this. Uh, these are five. Um, this usually three or four, right? And the, the PCB board, if you say, $5. It's got to come from China. Somebody's got to build it. What I've done here is I took the PCB first. You could just solder the, the D1 Mini directly onto the board. But what I did to make it modular is I soldered the, these headers onto the D1 Mini. So now it has these sort of down pins like a Node MCU has. Node MCU comes with them. A D1 Mini, you have to put them on yourself. And then solder on these, these sort of receiving female headers onto this. And it's important which side you put them on. I got one, I put it on the wrong side and I'm still trying to repair that one. You know, it says Wemos, that's where the Wemos goes. That's where the D1 Mini goes on that side. So I wanna put it with those things up. Um, I did this also, I put a little short header on this because we're gonna, that's where we're gonna connect these jumpers for the display. And then, um, what else did I do? Oh, I soldered on a little piece of extension cord. So this is extension cord, this is where the, the uh, AC voltage will connect, the, the you know 120 for us in the States will connect. This is a very specific power supply. Okay, this is what's important. It's the IRM-03-5, okay? And that's that's this uh, that's this power supply. Well, I just wanted to tell you at the very least that this is how you do it. You put this, uh, this will then go on here. And then you, once it pops through those holes, you can solder the solder the power supply down there. Then you can, you just pop the um, D1 Mini into here, and I'm pretty sure, let's see, my, yep, yep. It goes this way, so that the uh, USB port, the USB connection on the D1 Mini is on the opposite side from these extra other pins that are over here. And then these, you connect to down here, just like it says. So five volts goes to five volts. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so that's it. So this one's got about, you know, another minute worth of soldering to do here, and we're ready to go. So now we're gonna take one that I did already solder together. We got this guy here. We're gonna take a brand new display out of the package. What Luma did on his instructions, if you follow his instructions, one of the things he did was he took a heat gun and he took off this little connector right here. He did that so that he could make it a little bit more flat on the back. So you wouldn't have um, maybe quite the bulk and you would have a, a little bit more space. I took my little clips, uh, my little clippers, and I kind of just cut off the metal parts here and then pulled it off with a little blade. And then you can just pry this whole thing off. And then you can just tap these little tiny pins with a soldering iron to pull those off. So now there's two flashings that we need to do. Okay, one of them is for the Nexteon display. You have to essentially flash the display and you have to flash the D1 Mini. Okay, go to the GitHub page. You can download, what I've done is just, you download the whole thing right over here. Grab this whole thing, download the zip because you're gonna need several bits out of it. You're gonna need a lot of bits out of it. You download this whole zip file, and then you'll have this, this folder structure here. 
uh, in this, I think it's here, the Nexteon HMI. Yes, you'll have this HA switch plate dot TFT file. You see that? So that file is what you're going to put, excuse me, what you're going to put on the display. Okay. The display has a little uh, spot on the back here where you can put an SD card. So I'll skip the step, but essentially all you have to do is get a, a micro SD card like this little guy here, a little micro SD card um, that is formatted as FAT32. That's important. And then you just copy that switchplate.tft file onto this, onto this card. Okay. And then you plug the card in. Just pop that sucker in there. And then I will fire it back up again. Power it back up. Now it's going to find, it's going to see that card in there and the file on it. And it will just start uh, booting up. It says, uh, check data 100% update successful. So we're done. It's, it's done. So now uh, I can unplug it again. I'm going to take out the S D card. Okay, so now I'm just plugging in the D1 Mini into my computer through the USB. No big deal. So Luma's got instructions on how to use a Node MCU, the Node MCU downloader or Node MCU flasher. I've used my mainstay, which is Flash Easy, and it works. Inside this Arduino sketch is a bin file, HA switch plate ino.d1mini.bin. See that? So I just copied that file, just dragged it and dropped it into my ESP Easy folder. And it's right there. Okay. So now I'm just going to use Flash Easy, just like I do for everything else. Okay. So then I select the COM port, COM6, because I've got, that's where I've got it plugged in. Then select, all right, HA switch plate, INO, D1 mini dot bin. Here we go. Flash. Boop. Okay. So now you can see this says HASP initializing. Dun, 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 dun. So we're done with the flash. The flash worked. What you've got here is a QR code, right? It's a QR code. That's awesome. I take out my phone and I point it at the QR code and it says, do you want to join this network? And I say, well, yes, I do want to join that network. Thank you very much. And so once I've joined that network, that's how I set up my Wi-Fi and such. So now it's giving me this page here where I can put in my Wi-Fi. Configure Wi-Fi. And there you go. I can select my Wi-Fi. And then I can put my password in for my Wi-Fi. And I can name it. Uh, now we're going to do the MQTT broker. And my password. It's got my Wi-Fi user and password. And MQTT broker. IP address, user and password. And I also important thing here was to name the node. So we're going to call this a node and it's the name that I gave it is master. Okay. So done with all that, I'm going to hit save and it's going to do some more magic. Um, all right. Now, if you can sort of see the display, the display says it's connected. It says it's connected to Wi-Fi, and it says it is connected to my MQTT broker. That over here now is a file that is called deployhasp.sh. See that? There's a there's a several different ways to do this. Um, Luma's got them all laid out for us, depending on which way you're using Home Assistant. And if you're using uh, HasIO, like me, then there's this. So to get this to work, you have to be able to run a uh, command from the command line. Uh, I think probably the easiest way is to you, if you're using IDE, I think that will work. Um, so let's go to, let's go to my home assistant now. So we'll go here to home assistant and we're going to go to, um, HasIO. We're going to go to the add-ons that I have. I have IDE running and, uh, we're going to open the web UI for IDE. When you, when you log into IDE, the username and password that you use is the same that you use for your user uh, to log into HasIO. One of the nice things about this IDE um, is that you have, you have a command line down here. So now I can just go to what Luma's got for us here and I can start copying and pasting into this command. We put that in and I hit enter and now it's telling me 
it asked me what my device name is going to be. And I put master. So now I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's it. It did it, right? So let's see now, do I need to restart? I can't remember. Once that process completes, you can restart home assistant server and apply all the changes. Okay. So let's do that. So we go back here, configuration always. I like to always check my configuration. So now we're going to go to restart IDE plugin. Now's a fine time to talk about the IDE plugin. If you go to the add on store in HASIO, is it on the official? I can't remember if it's on the official. Nope. It must be on the community community has IO add-ons and right there. It's this one. Once you've got these HA switch plates running, if you just do reload automations, things get messed up. So unfortunately, once you start doing this, you won't be able to just reload automations. You'll just have to restart all of home assistant when you do that. Sorry. So we've got our switch plate up and it's connected to MQTT and all click on this first time setup and then just click trigger. And now it's going to do a bunch of stuff. There it is. We're connected again. All right. Now, and it's connected here too. Holy smokes. Look at this. It's working. It's working. Look at this. We've got buttons. We've got buttons. Yay. Woo. It's all set up now. Congratulations. We have now set up an an HA switch plate. We should call these Luma switch plates to be honest, but he probably doesn't want that, but that's what we should call them unofficially. There's a few things that you can do here <clears throat> in this, in this page here, which is um, on this tab up here at the top in this master page selection, you can change what page is displayed. If I put this master active at the top to zero, then it will show page zero, which is the page that just says you're connected. If I go to page one, it will show this basic page that's got some scenes. These are just examples. Okay. This isn't actually going to dim any of my lights as it sits. You can then go to page two and it will show some weather, 24 degrees, the date, the time, and that it's cloudy outside. Okay. So anyways, you can just go through this and Luma's got a set up. What do you got? Nine, nine different, um, example panels, example screens for us to play with. Okay. One of them, that last one was for a 3d printer. It shows kind of a graph. That's kind of a cool feature. So you could show trends of, of uh, sensor information. This one has a media player. Um, this one is an alarm keypad. That's cool. This one is oh, just some blank buttons for you to play with. This one is some sliders. These are sliders. I don't know if you can see them, but you can slide these with your finger. See sliders like that. So if you have dimmers, you can dim things or volume controls, right? So that's cool. So what I want to do now is show you basically how to get this switch plate right here to, um, control your lights. The way Luma's got this set up, which makes it very easy to distribute to all of us is, uh, he's got it set up so that it uses packages in home assistant. So now if you go to my config folder, you see, I've got a folder here that says packages and inside that packages folder, I've got a bunch of other things. Most of it is YAML files, I think, right? Or maybe all of it's even YAML files. Yep. It's all YAML files. Okay. So in my simple understanding of what this hat of what happens here with packages is now that we have this packages, uh, system working, I can put any YAML file I want in here. It will act like it's part of my configuration or my automations.yaml or whatever. Luma's got a good explanation here of how some of these things work. I read it and it's very clear after I understood it, but it took some experimenting for me to be able to understand what was going on. And, but the basics are this, when you set up one of these switch panels, it's going to have a MQTT topic that it will respond to. And that is HASP slash and then the name of your plate for this one that we've, we're using today, it's master. And then you've got command or state, and then some subtopic after that, which is going to be in most cases, something like this, where it's a button. All right. We're going to look at this scenes page first. So what we've got here, this is just an automations file. Let's, so let's walk through it. The beginning of this automation is the trigger and the trigger is just any time that the switch plate is turned on. Anytime the switch plate is turned on, 
then all of the stuff that hap that is listed after action is what's going to happen. All right. So the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to send an MQTT message. MQTT publishes the service and it's going to send it to HASP master command and then P1B4, which is page one, button four. Now, the way the buttons are numbered on here, the way that um, Luma set it up for us, and he did a great job and it makes it very easy, is the buttons are, the three buttons along the bottom are button one, button two, button three. And then starting from the top, you've got button four, button five, button six, and button seven. Okay. So if I want to send a, a command to button four to set the font that's what this is doing and the payload is two and it's a good way to do this it as an example is using something like mqtt lens okay so that's what we're going to do this isn't the way to do it to get your ha switch plate to actually control things this is just a way to kind of give you an example all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to i'm going to publish a message to the topic hasp master slash command slash p which one this is p1 isn't it p1 button four and then i'm going to change the text so the last part here is dot txt and what i want it to say we're going to have it say um we'll just have it say crown because that's my crown molding lights in here so here we go if i click this yeah, oh look at that on this display, it changed. It it now says crown at the top. Can you see it? It says crown. Now if I want it to say something else, I'll have it say Dr. Z's just because. And it now says Dr. Z's. So wow. that's the basic um, concept behind all this. Using MQTT lens like I just did is a great way to play with it and figure it out. But uh, if I want it to really stick, then I need to change it in these examples. In this particular case, if I want it every time it starts up to have that text on there, I would have to change it here. So instead of lights on, then I would have to have it say, uh, you know, crown lights. Now, when it starts up, any time that HASP master status becomes on, meaning the thing was started up, then it will show crown lights in that box. Is that clear? Okay, so you can go through this and, and you can use Luma's examples and you can change the names and you can change them in here and then when you restart it, they'll change and they'll stay with whatever you put in here. It'll stick. Okay, let's change the font size. So here I wrote font as the last bit of my, excuse me, as the last bit of my subtopic. And then down here, I want the font to be bigger. So we'll make it three. Let's see what happens. Boom, look how big that got. See, look at that. Now look how big it is. Okay. And if I change the payload, this is the payload where it says message here, that's the payload. So if I change the payload to one, now it's going to be super tiny. Okay. So now let's have some fun because this is great. It's kind of black and white serviceable. This is an example, right? But what if I want to have colors? Oh yeah. You want colors. Don't you want colors? Yes, you do want colors. So let's change the color. If you want to change the color. So what I changed was font. So this was part of my subtopic, right? It was font. I changed text. I actually just wrote TXT, right? Right here. And that changed the text. Now I want to change the colors. So there's uh, the to change the colors, you, you change the foreground with PCO and you change the background with BCO. Okay. And then, as Lumo's pointing out, the colors are funky. They've got these funky Nextian uh, color codes and they're a 565 16 bit color code. And it makes me sound really smart when I say that, like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't. Okay. It's, it's not your typical, um, hexadecimal codes that we're used to using or, or HTML names, or there's, it's just this funky thing they decided to use, whatever. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I will change the background of this button to 
Home Assistant Blue. One, three, seven, four. And then I hit publish. And you can see it turned blue. Sweet. And if I want to change, because blue, now the black font doesn't show up so well. I'm going to go, I'm going to change that font back to big. Let's change the font back to three so we can see it. All right, so now let's change the, the PCO. And we'll make the PCO, well, white is what? Six, six, five, five, three, five. And publish. And now it's white. So now you can see it. Yay. Last thing we're going to do. do is we are actually going to control a light with this button. To do that, we need a new automation. And the automation trigger is going to be the state of that button turning to on. If we go back to MQTT lens for a second, and if I subscribe to a, a topic, we're going to copy most of this. If I subscribe to um, HASP master state and then put this little number sign here and subscribe. Now, anytime that, that one of these buttons changes states, I will see it down here. So if I click this button, there you go. See that? You see how that popped up? Well, when I was trying to figure it out, using MQTT lens like this was, was a good way to do it. Now that I understand it, I don't need to do that anymore. But if you're just playing around, this is a good time. I get a feedback of what the messages are that were sent. So the messages that were sent were HASP master state P1 B4 on capitals, both, both are capitals, capital O, capital N. Okay. So now I know what my trigger is going to be. I'm going to say that any time page one screen, well, this is seen, but page one button four is pressed. Anytime page one button four goes to on, then I want something to happen. Well, what do I want to happen? In my case, I am going to make this a uh, switch toggle. And then the name of my switch goes here. Switch office light. Okay. Now, because I did it here, it's going to have to restart home assistant again. So we can do that. We need to do it to make it work. So let's do it. We'll go back to home assistant. I click this, the light will come on. There it goes. Can you see, you can, you can see it on my face. The light comes on, the light goes off. We did it. Yay. <laughs> All right. So that is the super, super, super basics. We got a switch plate together. Um, I don't know how much anybody who is really learning for the first time is going to be able to follow a lot of that mess that we just experienced over the last two hours. Um, but we did it. We got through it all and we, we set up, um, a, a, an HA switch plate. We set up the, uh, the next end display, we got it connected to Home Assistant. We messed around with customizing it a very little bit, just some basics on, on fonts and the structure of, of the MQTT topics and how you have to put that together. And we got it to control one of my lights in Home Assistant. So that's actually a good, that's a good first day. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. Okay.